Welcome back to Bayesian Statistics. This is regression part two. We're doing simple linear regression, and we've been playing with this Sydney Hobart boat race data set because it's actually really useful for what we're doing, and you'll see this as we go along with it. All right, so um, you can watch the previous videos on it. it. talks a little bit about what the data is about. I'm just showing you here's the boat race, so when we're talking about it, you'll understand it. Um, here's the plot of the data. And here is a line through the data, and we're looking for that line from a Bayesian perspective. Okay, so that green line is the least squares fit, if you know what that means, and it looks pretty good. Um, we have this model here. I wanted to make sure that you understood that we have epsilon here, because epsilon is going to help define the model completely, because it has variance associated with it. And here was the model that we came up with in the last video. So yi is beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i. We're assuming that the epsilon i follow a normal 0 sigma squared as its uh, distribution. Now, since we're in the Bayesian framework, beta 0 and beta 1 and sigma squared are all parameters, which means they're all random variables, and we needed to set up the prior distribution for them. And then here it says in the next video, we will focus on coding this model in JAGS, and this is that video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is read in the video and or read in the data and separate it into x and y. So I do read.table. It's in the other video as well. Uh, the separator here is a tab. Uh, we're going to peel off data one dollar sign year as our x. Y one is going to be data one dollar sign time, and n one is the length of it. So how many observations we have, and this is what we're going to need to pass through to Jags. Okay, so here's a reminder of our model, and here it is coded in JAGS. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run through i is 1 to n1. That's how many observations we have. We're going to look at why i is distributed as a normal distribution with a mean, and the mean is going to vary by each individual observation, and it's going to have a precision tau 1. And if you remember, JAGS uses precision instead of variance. Okay. Now what I need to do is look at the mean here. Well, the mean for each observation is beta 0 plus beta 1 times the x1i associated with it. So which one are we looking at? And that sets up the mean that gets plugged into here, which sets up our likelihood. Uh, now we have our prior distributions. So we have beta 0 d norm 0 0.0001, which is our 100 squared. And beta 1 was 0, uh, d norm, uh, 0, 100 squared. And remember, these are in precisions, so I've written it this way. Sigma squared is going to be 1 over tau, and tau we're going to do is gamma 1, 1. And we'll see what this produces for us. Uh, we're going to set up our data here, and so we've got a list, x1, y1, n1. Those are the ones we peeled off the data earlier, and we're just saying, hey, these are the variables that we are going to use. Um, the parameters we want to save off are beta 0, beta 1, and sigma squared, and we need some initial values to start at to make sure everything works right. So here we're going to set off beta 0 equals 0, beta 1 equals 0, y. I don't know what they're going to be. Uh, and then we have tau 1, and since it's a precision slash variance, it has to be a positive number, so I just put in 1. Are these the best numbers you can put in? Absolutely not, but I'm trying to show you what happens as we go through this. We're going to come back and do this example again in a little bit. All right, so we're going to write out the data, or our model that we had. We called it mod 1. This is going to get pushed out. We're going to run the model. Here's our data is data 1. Our initial is uh, in its 1. Parameters are parm 1, which we specified before. Here we're doing a thousand iterations of two chains, and our model file is happens to be this one, mod 1 JAGS. They have to match up. Okay, so we're going to update our samples. So I'm going to take mod 1 JAGS, and I'm going to pull 5,000 samples from two chains. So that gives me 10,000 samples. So you can think of these initial ones sort of like burn-in, and these are the ones I'm going to keep. So burn-in is the samples that are early on in the chain and may not be reflective of the posterior distribution. All right, so once I have this, uh, and remember, if you're trying to do this for yourself, uh, just pause the video and you can type this in yourself. On the previous ones, I've given you the actual code 
But uh, if you're going to be good at this, you have to just code it yourself. Uh, but there is a file out on the repository that you can go and get and modify, and it will help you run all of this. All right, so let's look at the trace plots. Uh, beta zero, it's nice and flat. Looks like a fuzzy caterpillar. Um, not wandering around anything. So I think maybe this is not horrible. Uh, for beta one, I see a number, you know, it's kind of flat. Not wandering around and up and down. It's kind of flat and looks like a fuzzy caterpillar. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, Sigma squared, again, flat, fuzzy caterpillar kind of looking thing. So that means it's uh, converged to a stationary distribution. Uh, so I'm staring at this. I'm thinking, eh, it's not so bad. So how good is it? Well, to do this, we need to peel off from mod 1, JAGS 2, the samples. Once we have those samples, we're going to break each chain so that we have them, uh, and then we're going to combine them back together, okay, so that it's in a data frame because data frames are easy to use. So this this whole bit here is to get our data from uh, an MCMC object uh, into a data frame that we can use. Okay, so now that we have it in a data frame, uh, we can get some parameter estimates. A parameter estimate for beta 0 and a parameter estimate for beta 1 would just say, well, maybe I'll use the median. Chains 1, beta 0, chains 1, beta 1. And what do I do? I want to plot this to see how it fits. So x1, y1 is color. That's the blue dots. And then I put the line in here, b0 plus b1, x1. And the color is red, and you can see this line here. And if I looked at that line, I'd say, it's horrible. We did something wrong. This is absolutely horrible. And that's the point of this video is to show you that if you're a bit naive, you can produce garbage, um, which I would consider this garbage. And what we need to do is go back and see what we needed to fix. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. This is the first code, so I would make sure you have this all typed in before you go to the next video and you have it up and running, okay? Make sure it works for you before you go on to the next video because what we're going to do is modify the previous code to make this work. There's basically two assumptions that we've made that are wrong, and we're going to work on one of them, fix it, and see if we can get something that's improved. We'll do that in the next video, so I will see you there.